Hi friends, welcome back to A Global Kitchen. Now I'm not sure about you, but I've been feeling the February gray winter COVID lockdown blues. So I've been trying to make some food that's lighter, uh, brighter in flavors, but also in how it looks. So today I've decided to make a vegetarian version, actually vegan, uh, of the provincial style French soup. Um, really simple to make, just some onions, leeks, fennel, some uh, canned tomatoes, but then also some really lovely saffron to brighten things up. And because so many of you asked, I'm also gonna make my fairy natta recipe, but I'm gonna make another video for that. But I'm gonna serve the two together uh, for lunch because I think they just pair so well. So let's not waste any time and let's head to the stoves. I have one medium-sized onion. I prefer to cut it into long strips with the grain of the onion. This helps the onion to cook down a lot easier and makes your dishes tastier. If you cut the onion against the grain, I find they don't soften up as easily and the onions seem to remain a little tough. I also like to trim off the stem end of the onion as I find it easier to slice. We're just going to use the white and a little bit of the light green part of the leek, so just cut it off at that point. I'm trimming off the root part and I like to peel off a layer or two of the leek. I like to cut the leek into more manageable, smaller pieces. And then you can cut them into half moons, like I'm doing, or cut them once lengthwise and then crosswise for slightly smaller pieces. Here's my bulb of fennel. Sometimes they're sold with the long fronds still attached. You can use those parts for making a vegetable stock, soups, or as a garnish. But this is how it's normally sold. I'm going to trim off the stalks and then cut them lengthwise and then thinly slice them. If there are any delicate fronds on the stems, I'll often roughly chop them and use them as a garnish. It's easier to cut the fennel bulb if you first cut it in half and then into a quarter. I also like to trim away the inner core a bit when I'm slicing it this way. Then cut it crosswise into thin smaller pieces. I want the soup to be chunky but easy to eat. Grab a couple of peeled cloves of garlic and roughly chop them. Heat your pot over medium-high heat and pour in three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now that the oil is hot, I'm gonna add in the onion, leek, fennel, and garlic and season it with a good couple pinches of salt. Give it a good stir. We want the onions to cook down and become nice and soft. This will take around 10 minutes. You don't want them to color at all, so if you see them browning, turn down the heat. I have one pound of baby potatoes. Cut them in half and then into thin slices. There's no need to peel them. If you're using larger potatoes, pretend this is a large potato. Cut it in half, then cut it into a quarter, and then thinly slice it. Now I have half a celery root that was lying in the fridge. I don't remember what I used the other half for, but I'm gonna use this today. This is just over half a pound, about 300 grams. Trim off the root and stem end, and then you can peel it, either with a vegetable peeler, or if you're gonna use a knife, make sure you have a flat base and then thinly trim the outside of the celery root. Since the soup is going to be chunky, you want to cut it into manageable, bite-sized pieces. Cut it into half, and then into another half, and thinly slice it. The same thickness as the potatoes. You could also cut them into small cubes if you want. I'm using a cup of canned tomatoes. There's four here with some of the juice. You can either first roughly chop them, or add them whole to the soup, and then use the back of a spoon or ladle to break them into smaller chunks. Inside this pouch is the ingredient which really transforms this dish. And it is saffron. This saffron comes from a company in Canada called True Saffron. I received this as a gift from my in-laws for Christmas who are friends with the growers. I store the saffron in the pouch to keep it away from light. This helps to preserve its taste and aroma. This saffron has a lovely, distinctive, earthy aroma. When I think of where saffron grows, I first think of Spain, Iran, Turkey, Kashmir, and Afghanistan. 
but certainly not southern Ontario, where true saffron grows their crocuses, and it's really great stuff. We're going to use a couple of pinches of it. I'll get some out to show you. Just look at that. Look how lovely and deep reddy orange the strands are. The leeks, onions and fennel have cooked down and softened, so now I'm going to add the tomatoes. If you want to use fresh tomatoes, just use four or five plum tomatoes and roughly chop them. I'm going to add two nice pinches of the saffron. The saffron will help turn the soup into a lovely reddy orange color. Cook the tomatoes for around five minutes. Sometimes a recipe will say to steep the saffron in a warm liquid for a few minutes, but I don't think that's necessary for this recipe. The tomatoes have cooked down a bit, so now I'm adding in the potatoes and celery. And I'm going to add a touch more salt and some freshly ground black pepper. I have some fresh thyme. I'm going to pull off some leaves from the stems. If you have some dried herbe de Provence, you can add some here, but just one teaspoon, as too much dried herbs can overpower a dish. Give the soup a good stir. This looks like it's going to be a light, healthy, and satisfying meal. You can feed four to six people with this soup. I'm pouring in some thawed light vegetable stock that I had in the freezer. I'm pouring in just enough to cover the vegetables. It's about five cups, or one and a quarter liter. Bring it to a boil and cover it with the lid slightly ajar so a little steam escapes. Reduce the heat to medium low and let it simmer for 20 to 30 minutes until the potatoes and celery root are tender. As the soup simmers, I'm going to assemble a quick and easy rouille. Rouille is a southern French garlicky and spicy mayo that accompanies a provincial style fish soup. There are many different versions of rouille. Some include mashed potato or roasted red pepper, but today I'm going to make one with pantry items I have on hand. A couple of cloves of garlic, a teaspoon of tomato paste, a teaspoon of sambal olek for the chili, and half a cup of mayonnaise, and some lemon juice for acidity. Traditionally it's made in a mortar and pestle, but since I'm using ready-made mayonnaise, or veganaise if you're vegan, I'm using a rasp to grate the garlic into a paste. Don't forget to scrape away the garlic from the underside of the rasp. If any pieces of garlic remain, just finely chop them. Remember to wash the rasp well if you also use it with lemon or orange zest for sweet recipes. You don't want the garlic flavor to transfer into the dessert. I'm adding the tomato paste and sambal olek to the bowl with the garlic. If you have any harissa, it's a perfect time to use it. I thought I had some, but it appears I'm out, so the sambal olek is a good substitute. I'm spooning in a half cup of mayonnaise. Again, use veganaise if you're vegan. Mix it up well. I want to add some acidity, so I'm going to add a squeeze of lemon. You could also add a touch of red wine vinegar if you don't have any lemon. Adjust the seasonings if you want it to be spicier or it needs some salt or pepper. I also want the rouille to be a bit thinner than the consistency of mayonnaise, so I'm going to thin it out with a tablespoon or two of water. I like the consistency when it's like a nice, loose whipped cream. Once you're happy with the consistency and flavor of the rouille, set it aside. The soup has been simmering away and I'm ready to check it. The saffron has given it a gorgeous orange ready color and a fabulous aroma. The soup should be chunky, like a loose stew. You can make this soup not vegetarian using chicken or a light fish stock and adding cubes of fish or chicken. Or, if you have a vegan or vegetarian in your family, you could cook some fish or chicken in a separate pan and those who want it can add it to their soup. I'm roughly chopping some fresh flat leaf Italian parsley as a garnish. Again, if you have some fennel fronds, roughly chop them too. Look at this lovely golden stew. Ladle up a good portion of vegetables, Make sure you have a nice balance of broth to the vegetables. Garnish it with some roughly chopped parsley and then finish it off with a nice dollop of the garlicky spicy rouille. 
Here's our saffron fennel potato and celery root soup with hui, a perfect light meal. I'm giving it a good stir to make sure the spicy garlicky mayo gets nicely mixed in. I just finished serving the saffron fennel potato stew to the family for lunch, and one of them said, that was sunshine in a bowl. It's exactly what I was going for. Well, now I'm gonna serve myself some. So I think it's now time for my lunch. Let me have a taste of this stew. Oh, that's good. Hmm. You know, the saffron really brightens everything up and the garlicky spicy mayonnaise or hui just takes everything to the next level. If you wanna keep this vegan, just make sure you use a vegan mayonnaise. Now I'm gonna have some fairy natta. I'm just gonna dip it in. You don't have to, but I'm going to today. Mm. The chickpea flavor from the farinata just marries really well with this stew, but any old uh, crusty baguette or bread will go really well uh, also. Don't forget to check out the farinata recipe, and I hope you give this recipe, the saffron fennel potato stew, a try, and leave me a comment if you do. And don't forget to like and subscribe to A Global Kitchen. And I'll be back soon with many more wonderful recipes. Bye and happy cooking.